Okay, so picking back up where we left off um, on the previous on the previous set of slides, um, we're now going to take a look at factoring uh, this particular polynomial. And in order to do so, you, you have to start getting either a incredibly good at recognizing uh, decimal uh, decimal values, um, or we have to start moving into the rational zero theorem. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about that once once we get to once we get to uh, this particular part of the problem. But you know we're still going to start start off with the very first thing that I said to do, which is to graph. And uh, so so we graph this particular function, and then we start looking. And if, if you don't know what kind of number what kind of numbers to expect, like when I I see that 2.333. I'm going to make the assumption that that's repeating, which means that that would be two and one third, uh, which is seven thirds. But you know, I've had a lot of practice, and if you see this, you know, uh, that 0 0.429, that's probably not 429 over 1,000. That's just how far the graph uh, carries its particular values. And so, but I do see this uh, on the on the far left. I see this negative two being a root, and so I'm going to start with that, and I want to try and simplify this equation as much as I can before I even get into dealing with those other numbers. And so that'll be that'll be our first place to start is with root negative two. So I'm going to say root negative two, and then this is 21 negative 16 negative 95, and then 42. None of these have any kind of a, uh, a numeric gaps in them. You know, the, the, the degree of the terms are all in perfect descending order, so I don't have to worry about adding in my zeros. Then, uh, so I, I bring down the first term, and the thing with this one is that the numbers are going to get a little bit more complicated, and, you know, and that's going to happen. Uh, uh, 21, 21 times negative 2, you know, we're always multiplying that number under the bar by the number that's inside that half square. And so 21 times negative 2 is going to be a, a, negative, a negative 42. And then when you have negative 42 minus 16, um, that's what, negative 58, I believe. And I'm just, uh, I'm going to double check. There we go. So it's a negative 58 uh, times times uh, negative two. So negative times negative is a positive, and that's going to be what I believe 116. Yes. So so this is this is positive 116 minus minus 95 is 21. Minus 95 is a 21. And uh, uh, 21 times two times a negative two. We're back at that 42. That's negative 42. That's root. That's root zero. And so that part works out well. Um, we have now um, x plus two, two as a factor. If x is a negative two, that means x plus two is a factor. And then we're left with this 21 uh, x squared minus 58 x plus 20. One, and if you remember, you know how to factor uh, quadratics without, uh, or, or with that leading term, leading term other other than one, then you can you can work this problem from here. You can also go back to the quadratic uh, to the quadratic formula. That's another that is another technique that you can use. Um, I am, so first I'm just checking, I'm checking my graph to make sure, make sure that it lines up, which it does. I'm now looking at the, you know, the, the, the second half, the non, uh, linear, the nonlinear factor. So this is, this is my concern now. Uh, I see those two numbers pop up again. And now I'm kind of left in a, you know, okay, what do I do? What well, what do I do? How do how do I figure out what to do next? And that's where that's where this this thing called the rational zero theorem comes into play. Uh, 
the rational zero theorem. And, and, and so what it says is all, um, all rational zeros of a polynomial Um, must be uh, contained in the following set. And so when, when, I, when I say uh, set, I just mean like, like a group, like a group of numbers. And, and so they are, and, and the thing about this is that you're going to run into the positives as well as the negatives. So they are the um, they are the factors of the constant they are the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading of the leading coefficient And but now we're already using we're already using the graph, you know, to kind of help guide us. So what that means is we have this this remaining we have this remaining part, 21x squared minus 58x plus 21. And so what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for are is, is the, the ratio, so plus or minus of all of the factors all of the factors of 21 divided by all of the factors of 21. This, this numerator comes from the leading coefficient and this denominator comes from the, uh, um, from the, uh, the constant. And so then when you think through well, what are the, you know, what are the uh, coefficients of 21, always, always, always start with one because that's one that you have to take into consideration. And then our next one is three and then seven, and then 21. So I've got both of these. I have both of these here. But um, this, this means, what is it? There are, there, there's 16 possibilities. And you know, that's gonna, that, that's, well, uh, a lot of them are actually gonna eliminate themselves. Um, but, you know, the first, is 1, 3, and 7, and 21, all divided by 1. But that doesn't, that doesn't change anything. So that's your first set. That's your first set. Is everything is divided by, everything is divided by 1. So didn't mean to go quite that far. It's just, it's just the, the, the coefficient numbers. But then I'm going to look at, you know, everything divided by 3. So this is 1 third. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so then you have 7 thirds. And then 3 dividing into 21. 21 divided by 3 is 7, but we've got the 7 here. So I don't have to do that. So now we go to the 7. The 7. You have 1 divided by 7. You have 3 divided by 7. You have 7 divided by 7, but that's 1. And then you have 21 divided by 7, but that's 3. So those, so those don't count. And then, uh, then we move into 21. You have one divided by 21. You have three, you have three divided by 21, but that reduces to one seventh. So we've already got that. You have seven divided by 21, but that reduces to one third. So we already have that. And then you have 21 divided by 21, and that reduces to one. So these, every possible factor comes from these. And we saw that 2.3333, which I said uh, earlier, looks like 7 thirds. And so I'm going to, um, I'm going to, you know, pick up with my synthetic division. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up with my synthetic division and I'm going to try that that uh, seven, I'm going to try that seven seven thirds, and so I'm I'm starting off with this twenty one negative fifty eight twenty one. Um, 
before I do the 7 thirds, so here's your 28, negative 58 and 21. Before I do that 7 thirds, let's, let's pick an incorrect one. So let's pick like the number, the number 3. And so if I picked, if I picked 3, I bring down the 21, I multiply that by 3, I get 60, I get 63. Uh, 63 minus 58 is 5, and then 5 times 3 is, is 15, which is, what, 30, 36, which does not equal 0. And, and so that means that, that the number positive 3 is not a root. So... Um, so that's what happens. That's what happens when you pick an incorrect one. You end up with that that uh, non-zero remainder, and so you know it's not a root, and then therefore not a factor. So let's go to seven thirds. Let's go to seven thirds, and bring down the twenty-one. Bring down the twenty-one. Now what I'm doing when I say all of this, is 7 thirds times 21. That's the same as saying 7 times 21 divided by 3, which is the same as saying 7 times 21 divided by 3, which is the same as saying 21 divided by 3 times 7. Yeah, and, and you're going to hear me say that a lot, because I say, I say, um, I, go, I go 21, so I'm starting there on the left. 21 divided by 3 is 7 times 7 is 49. And then that leaves negative uh, 9. Negative 58 plus 49 is negative 9. And then negative 9 divided by 3 is a negative 3. Times 7 is a negative 21. And then there's our remainder, 0. The, the problem is is that I, ha I have what would be 21x minus, minus 9. And so how do, there's, there's actually a problem here because that's, that's not going to work. Let's look at first this 7 thirds. So if x equals 7 thirds, then, um, by the way, before I go any further, I kind of dropped the plus or minus when we were when we were here, and uh, really it should be all of these positive negative one, positive negative three, um, positive and negative seven, and so on. But I kind of dropped them because if you remember from the graph, all of the other roots were positive, and and but in reality I have I have let's see here one two three. I have nine possibilities. Technically, I have 18 because I have to think of their negative counterparts as well. And we should see that in a future problem. But we found out that x equals 7 third is, is a root, which means it's factor. And the thing about is they have to be linear factors. They need to all be on the same line. So in order to write the factors, I need to multiply both sides by 3. So I have 3x is equal to 7 and then move that 7 to the other side. So I subtract 7 from both sides, and I get that 3x minus 7 is 0. Now, if I go back, so let's see here, what was, what was the other factor? What was the other factor? Uh, x plus 2. So I have this. If I were to graph x plus 2 times... Um, what is it, 3x minus 7, and I were to graph 21x minus 9, then I'm not going to get the correct solution. I'm not going to get the correct solution. Let me graph it just real fast. So this is x plus 2 times 3x minus 7. and then times 21x minus 9. And when I look at the two original graphs, let me, I have to change the scale on these some. 
So there we go. See, now I can see it. I can see that they don't entirely line up. And if, if I were to uh, continue, you know, working with this, let's see here. Aha. So there's one. And there's, there's the other. Um, they look the same. They pass through the same points, but it looks like they're at a different scale. And the reason for that is that 21... 21x minus 9 is not the correct root. It's not the correct root. And so what I have to do is there's that there's that 3. That's the same as this 3 right here, the leading coefficient of the binomial. I need to divide by 3. And and, and when I do that, as you'll notice, 29 and, or, or sorry, 21 and negative 9 are both divisible by 3. I get 7 and a negative 3. And so the correct answer is 7x minus 3. 7x minus 3. And so if I graph if I graph 7x, yeah, it looks more promising minus three, the graphs now overlap. And so then that would be the correct answer. Okay. Here's one that you can try on your own. So if you wish, you can pause the video now. Uh, I'm going to move forward uh, with the process. I start off with the graph. I'm looking for these I'm looking for these intercepts, and uh, the one that I want to work with at first is that is that negative five. The hope is to try and reduce some of these some of these coefficients. If I applied the the um, the rational root theorem at this moment, it would be plus or minus ten, and all of its factors over plus or minus. Uh, six, but the way it works out, you only really have to worry about one plus or minus. And so when I look at the factors of 10, I have one, two, five, and 10. And when I look at six, I have one, two, three, and, and, and six. So I have uh, what ends up being plus or minus one, two, five, 10 divided by one plus or minus 1, 2, 5, 10 divided by 2. Some of those will cancel because 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. I have plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10 divided by 3. And plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10 divided by 6. Uh, that's, that's a lot of different possibilities. So I want to try and eliminate some, some values where I can, if I can. And we saw that, what was it, negative 5, I believe. Yes, negative 5 is a root. And so that's going to be uh, that's going to be one of them. So you know x plus five because if x equals negative five is a root, then um, you know that that's going to be a pretty good place to start. So I take my negative five, synthetically divide. So there's six, six, thirty one, three, and negative ten. So bring down the 6, that's negative 30. That is uh, 1 times 5, or times negative 5, negative 5. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Times negative 5 is positive 10. Minus 10 is 0. And so then that leaves, um, that leaves 6x squared plus x minus 2. Uh, at this point, you have a lot of different options. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check. Uh, so x plus 5, 6x squared, was it plus x minus 2? Those seem to, um, those seem to overlap. I seem to overlap very well. I'm going to take a look now at this at this uh, 6x 
plus two, I see that it's intersecting at two of the remaining two of the remaining points. Now, at this point, you know, hopefully you would recognize that 0 0.5 is one half, and you may recognize that negative 0 0.667 is negative two thirds, but for for the practice of the rational zero theorem, let's assume that you didn't. Let's assume that you didn't know. And so I have this 6x squared plus x minus 2. So I'm going to look at the factors of 2 and the factors of uh, and the and the factors of 6. So this is plus or minus 1 or 2. And this is plus or minus 1, 2, 3, and 6. Uh, so we've dropped our number of potential factors here by half because there's only two in the numerator instead of four. Um, when I divide everything, when I divide everything by one, I have plus or minus one, plus or minus two. If I divide everything by two, I have plus or minus one half. And then, uh, you know, two divided by two is just one, which we've already we already have listed. So now I go to three. So I have plus or minus one third, plus or minus uh, plus or minus two-thirds, and then I move to the uh, uh, six. So I have plus or minus one divided by six, but then I have plus or minus two divided by six, which is one-third, which we already have listed. So I have here uh, 12 possibilities instead of something like almost 30. And so then it becomes a, so then it becomes a guessing game. So without going back Without going back to the graph, I remember that one of the numbers was 0 0.5. So I'm just going to start. I'm going to start with uh, what if the root was a negative, was a negative one half. So I bring down the six. Six divided by two is three times negative one is a negative three. Negative three plus one is a negative two. Negative two divided by two is uh, negative one times a negative one is a positive one. Negative two plus one is negative one. That so that means negative one half is not the the factor. And I know I could have gone back. I could have gone back to the graph and looked, but I just wanted you know to to kind of reinforce what happens what happens um, if you did choose the wrong number. So I bring down the six. Six divided by two is three times one is three. Three, three plus one is four. Four divided by two is two times one is two. So there's my two, that's my zero. And then I still need to divide my final result by two. So if I divide by two, this is three and that's two. So if X equals one, half is a root, 2x must equal 1, add 1 to both sides, or sorry, subtract 1 from both sides. So 2x minus 1 is the other factor, or another factor, and 1 half is a root. Based off of what we have here, 3x plus 2 must also be a factor, and 3x plus 2 equals 0, so I get 3x has to equal negative 2, divide both sides by 3, and you get negative 2 thirds must also be the root. So um, when I combine all of these, it was x plus 5 times 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 1 is going to be your equation. And then finally, I do I do just my last, I do my last check. So x plus 2. Let me turn these two graphs back on. And 2x minus 1. And so now I know that my answers, now I know that my answers are correct.